All right, I think we are live, ladies and gentlemen, and whatever else is out there. So, let's begin. So, just a quick recap, if you watched the other video, uh, this is basically part of a Docker's Beginner Guide. Um, this is episode two, so to speak, uh, to set up my SQL slash MariaDB. Um, and essentially, this is just a, as the name says, a beginner's guide to get through uh, doing basic things um, and setting up basic environments to do development. So let's just quickly just jump into this, shall we? So now that I see we're streaming as intended, so you you might be saying, well, Lance, there's several ways you could do this. Well, that's true. Anything with Docker, right? Um, you could run from a config like we did in the other video, but also you could run from a terminal, right? So my thought was maybe we should talk about how do we do this with a terminal um, and just running this like through CLI rather than creating a config file, which you will learn real quick these things called variables. If you don't know what that is, you're going to find out real quickly. And if you've ever done any kind of Linux uh, uh, work, you should know that in the CLI, sometimes you could run or pass variables, if you will. And so that's essentially what we're going to try and do here, right? So let's go ahead and get into our Visual Studio code here. Let's start a new terminal, as you see here. And let's go into our projects folder where we were working last time. Let's go into the Docker course, right? And see the lamp stack, right? So now we have this. So let's go ahead, the directory, and call it, what shall we call this? Uh, Well, let's just call this uh, database. All right, so now we're in our database here, right? So obviously if we're doing a no configuration file, we don't really need to have a folder, so to speak, right? Unless we're exposing it uh, to save into a separate place, right, rather than the um, image itself. But in this case, we're just gonna quickly show you how you could just really fast uh, run this through the command line, right? So we would essentially do Docker run. Now, of course, if you're on Linux, you're going to have to probably sudo, depending on how strict your sysadmin is, um, and Windows too, right? But I am logged in with, you know, super user privileges, so to speak. Um, so that's why I'm not running sudo or running this um, uh, Visual Studio code as administrator. If I did, um, that would be another thing. I would need my sysadmin to type in his or her password and authenticate it or just give this program permission. But that's another video about security, and eh, we're not gonna touch that today. So let's do it. So Docker run, right? And we need it to run something, right? Let's go ahead and call it my uh, Maria, right? Um, my Maria DB, why not, right? Okay, now remember we were talking about the variables, well, blah, pardon me, variables and passing the, uh, um, items through, right? So if we created this right now, MySQL, this container would generate a temporary password for us, right? And we'd have to go echo that out and get that password. Or we could use one of the variables that are available to us, which is MySQL root password, right? Like so. And now we just tell it what is our password that we want to put here. Let's just put, and again, I hope none of you do this, but let's just put password uh 2021 right because that's where we're at 2021 and let's go ahead and run it and now we choose our version maria db we could put in uh x point x or let's just go in the latest right let's just get the latest so we've had it right so we could type docker images right we see that we have it right and you here you can see the tag for it um, the image ID, when it was created, the size of the sucker, and the uh, um, repository for that, right? So technically right now, it's running, right? And you might be saying, well, um, how do you know? What can we see? Well, you might want to go to, um, let's say, uh, Bashboard, right? So we could just run quickly Dr. Exec. Um, 
and I believe we called it my Maria DB, if I'm not mistaken. Oops, and bash. All right, so there we are, right? And as you see, we're loaded here with our um, Docker image. It's there. We're in it. That's it. Hello. Uh, we've done it. Let's go home. So now you've just run it through um, basically uh, CLI, right? So let's go ahead and get out of that for a second. But you know, in the future, you may want to go and see the logs, right? So logs and then my MariaDB, right? And then here you can see the log to everything, right? So let's clear that out. Now, you might be saying, well, Lance, I want to go back to doing the config file because I'm going to run a Kubernetes thing, blah, 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 blah. Or maybe you just want to do this and run multiple uh, MySQL MariaDB databases and just have the one file and this way, you know, all is well, right? You want the same password, you want, you know, same username, who knows? Um, so what we would do now is just essentially go and um, create our Docker file, essentially, like what we did before, our YAML file. So in this case, we'll just do code and then let's just call it stack. Uh, should we do stack? Yeah, well, because we're eventually going to run everything, right? So we'll just do code stack and Visual Studio Code creates the file right here, so we don't have to go anywhere. And if you remember last time we were talking about versions, right? I believe we last did version 3.7, but we could even go as far as 3.1, which isn't really that far, but let's just show you that it still can work. And be careful of quotes and making sure that you spell things correctly. Um, I have been known to accidentally not do that right and then get some weird errors, right? So, and spacing is important, right? So, let's go ahead and just have this labeled DB for database, right? And let's go ahead and get the image. And in this case, we're going to have a DB. We just want the latest. Otherwise, we do this and then put in the version we want. But in this case, I just want the latest MariaDB, right? And another thing you should think about is uh, restart. You could have it on failure, whatever, but I will always put always, right? Um, and then the environment. This is um, important um, because this is where we are going to run that uh, variable we talked about, right? So think of this as the place you put these variables that are available to us. So in our case, we'll do MySQL uh, root password as so and let's just call it um, password uh, 2021 right so that is the start right now that's great we have it running but wouldn't it be great if we could um, perhaps go in here and see something right be able to access it. how do we know what's there yeah you could use my sql workbench and a couple other things you, know, you could do essentially but just really quickly, there's a really cool project called Adminner, very similar to um, PHP My Admin, which you could essentially do here too, right? But um, in this case, let's just do the latest version of Adminner, like so, right? And then we're going to do uh, restart, just like above, always, right? And here we can name the port that we wanted to use, right? Now, these ports, mind you, is not to do with MariaDB. This is strictly adminner. Why? Because this is underneath um, that image, essentially, this uh, environment, so to speak. Um, so, and then we're going to do, I think I don't have anything running on 8080 to 80. Oops. Right? As so, and uh, that should be good. We save that there. Now, there's several ways we can do this, right? We know this. And the thing is, you could do docker stack deploy, tack uh, C, and then the file, and then MariaDB, or you could do docker compose. That's popular too, right? Docker dash compose F, my, uh, tech F uh, stack uh, YAML up, right? So let's just do what you probably will see out in the wild anyways, just to not confuse anyone. Uh, so let's do docker compose, and then tack f, and then stack, I believe we called it. Yeah, stack, and then up. 
Oh, what did it not like? Unsupported config option for services.db. What did I type wrong? This is likely to be a misspelling I did. And I think it is. Uh, right here. And I misspelled environment. Wonderful, right? See, we were just talking about spelling. <laughs> and I just screwed the pooch. Okay. That should work. There we go. Right, so we're gonna have that do its thing and um, let it go in. Now, because we didn't create a username and password, we'll be logging in as root, right? Which is not always ideal to say the least, um, but in this case, we're just going to do that, right? So we'll do localhost 8080. And there we go, right? So here's our SQL um, login page. Again, this could have just been easily as PHP might have been. And what's cool is we see the log of everything going on here, what was accessed and whatnot. So in this case, if we type root, right? And our password was password 2021 database. We don't have one, but so now we have our access to our MySQL database, right? We have PDO um, extension enabled, which is great. Should be doing that. Um, and here you would be able to have the drop down of things that you wanted, right? So you can do a bunch of things here. You can import your SQL database should you want to. Um, so that's great um, that you would have that ability, especially if you didn't want to go and run like, uh, what is the, um, my SQL dump. Right? You could just easily, just as well as go in here. You don't want to do, you know, login through um, uh, terminal to uh, log in to MySQL, right? For instance, um, this is another way to handle those um, administrative things that you would want. So here you have your privileges. You can see the users that are on here. You can create a user just as easily and choose what privileges you want it to have. Ooh, boy, excuse me, hiccups. Um, and so as you see, that database, database, which we have defined, oddly enough, right? Um, you have the option here to do whatever it is that you want. You can see the process list of what's going on, right? And of course, the variables um, that you have access to here um, and the status, right? You can see the status of everything that's going on here. Quite a bit you can do here um, and see. But um, yeah, that's essentially it, um, guys. That was pretty simple, right? And look, you can easily go back to that. How cool is that? Can't do that with the PHP my admin. Now, this isn't as powerful as PHP my admin, right? This is something completely um, uh, weaker. But I mean, if you just need something lightweight, I mean, this is it, right? You have a lot of capabilities here, to be honest. So if you're a higher um, SQL um, coder, this might be great for you, right? And that's probably the wrong words to use, um, SQL coder. But essentially, I mean, that's what you would be, right? A SQL database um, administrator. Um, here, you have everything you could want, right? Everything pretty simple, all the types populated, just like PHP might have been. So it's really a great product, right? Um, but again, it's more lightweight than PHP might have been, probably more secure, less issues that have probably come up. But um, other than that, guys, that's essentially it. We've just created a MySQL MariaDB um, database um, that's ready to go. It was simple enough, only what, 14 lines of code, um, less if you consider um, you know, the version and whatnot uh, to be useless. Um, we could even have done this really in less code, right? Uh, essentially six. But that said, simple nonetheless. And we've learned now. Well, we've learned now <laughs> um, how to essentially get access to the Bash um, terminal on the Docker image itself. We learned how we could run this without having a config file, which is what we've been doing, writing configs. And eventually, as you kind of see right now with this config file. 
we will be able to put all of our things here. If it's starting to click now with our lamp stack, you're going to eventually see here our PHP my admin our or admitter, um, my SQL, MariaDB, um, PHP, right? Because PHP already has the Apache um, 2.0 on there, so we don't have to go through that in addition to that, right? Which is great, which is why I like that PHP um, Docker image. And there's a lot of configurations we can do there and variables as well. Um, and again, same with MariaDB, right? We would not only put the MySQL root password, but we could also create a user and uh, password in database. Um, and we'll eventually get into that. That'll be still beginner course, but not in this uh, LAMP stack setup. Um, but that said, that's it, guys. Hopefully you learned something. If not, let me know. Um, I'm always interested to know if you did not learn anything, or maybe you got a better way to do this. I am interested. Tell me how to do better, and hopefully we can all learn how to do better, right? Um, yeah, I'm not insulted, right? I, I'm no expert, right? I don't maintain or create Docker. Um, I'm just a user of it and always learning. So write me, let me know how we can do better, how we can do it quicker, what's a safer way. Um, obviously, I know we don't have to define the password in here. We can do variables and things like that. But just in general, um, love to hear what you guys want to see next, if anything. Um, but other than that, have a good day. Welcome to 2021. It's the first day and hopefully uh, we'll get this video series done <laughs> soon.